I long to hear him testify as a song about uh, some of my favorite American uh, roots musicians. Blind Willie McTell, who, who played on the streets of Atlanta, who managed to, uh, to maneuver the streets of Atlanta by himself as a blind man, played the 12-string guitar. Um, there's a verse about Skip James. I wrote the song with Trey Hensley, and Trey's favorite blues artist is uh, Skip James. So we put that one in, and then we obviously we put Charlie Poole in, who's a big uh, inspiration to me, not just as a musician, but he's just such a mysterious character. So it's, it's, my, uh, it's my tribute to uh, three of the greatest American roots music musicians of all time. Way downtown Atlanta, where the streetcars run. Early in the evening, before the day is done. If I was in Georgia, boys, I'd tell you where I'd go. I'd hear Blind Willie singing, turn your lamp down low. If I was in Mississippi, around Bentonia town, I go from door to door, listening for the sound that hard time killing floor in a minor key. Skip James singing the blues, two to open D. One foot in a world that's gone, one foot here today. But what I wouldn't give. Hear him sing and play Long ago and far away Yet they're still alive But I long to hear him testify 1925 If I was a traveler Of Carolina way Ninety years ago, I wouldn't hesitate I'd hear Charlie and his ramblers playing some old shack Maybe I would stick around and never make it back One foot in a world that's gone and one foot here today What I wouldn't give Sing and play long ago and far away, yet they're still alive. But I want to hear them testify. 1925. Thinking about a freight train Long and southern bound Rails ringing in my head Don't let your deal go down Strange times in the country, boys And I'm caught here in between 1925 and 2019 one foot in a world that's gone, one foot here today. What I wouldn't give to hear him sing and play. So long ago and far away, and yet they're still alive. I long to hear him testify, 1925. Well, I long to hear him testify in 1925.
Jimmy Rogers is, is one of the most amazing, most fascinating and most important figures in American roots music. And, and this song, Jimmy Rogers Wrote a Train, is a, is a brief biography of, of his short life and his short career and the incredible achievement achievements that that he accomplished in in his time he w he wanted to be every american's favorite singer he didn't just want to be the singing brakeman he also wanted he wanted to be the american cowboy he wanted to be the dapper um crooner all of that and if you look at all the existing photos of him they you, you can see that anyway this song jimmy rogers wrote a train is a brief overview over an incredibly important american life that was all too short He started as a water boy on his daddy's railroad gang. He loved to listen to the way the old black bluesman sang. The magic rubbed off on him. He was playing his guitar, wrote songs about. The southern skies and the wind swept prairie stars and he dreamed about the day when all the folks would know his name on that New Orleans and Northeastern Jimmy Rogers rode a train well he had to quit the railroad and he caught that old TB But he'd heard about Mr. Peer traveling down to Tennessee 1927 It was a roaring time But the Great Depression changed the world In 1929 But he entertained the people and it helped to ease their pain Traveling across the country Jimmy Rogers rode a train He sang about old love letters The day before he died And the last blue yodel sounded like A lonesome whistle cry Somewhere down below That Mason-Dixon line The singing brakeman was about to take that long last ride when he was running out of track through the Mississippi rain back home to Meridian Jimmy Rogers rode a train when he was running out of track through the Mississippi rain Back home to Meridian, Jimmy Rogers rode the train. Where the Bluebirds Call is a, is a song that I wrote with Tim Stafford, and it's inspired by a character called Cecil Sharp, who was a gentleman from England, who was a folk song collector, 
and he knew of certain ballads that he could not find in England anymore, but he knew that they existed somewhere. So he came to Southern Appalachia in the 20s because he knew that these, or he had a notion that these songs were had been preserved by the uh, Scots, Irish, and British migrants who, who came over here. And he did find a lot of these songs and he transcribed them and turned them into a tremendous collection of uh, folk songs and ballads. And uh, Tim Stafford and I uh, envisioned what it might have been like for him to come back to England and to, to uh, get old there and think about these days that according to his biographer were his most, his, his, uh, his most joyous and joyful days when he was here in, in, in the South collecting these songs. And we wondered if he would have loved to end his days here versus in England. Searching for a song up in the mountains Looking for a ballad in those hills Sometimes it felt as if the old tunes found him Though far away the music haunts him still England is a cold place in October And Virginia is so pretty in the fall he tells himself if he could do it over He'd end his days where the bluebirds call There's no place else so pleasant in his memory Like a melody and story it entwines Hour after hour Listening on the front porch in the pines England is a cold place in October And Virginia is so pretty in the fall He tells himself if he could do it over He'd end his days where the bluebirds call If he could do it over, he'd end his days where the bluebirds call. I wrote this song, uh, Blind Alfred Reed, uh, with my friend Trey Hensley, and it's about another hero of mine of American roots music who also found his way to Bristol in 1927. His name was Blind Alfred Reed. He was a, a street singer and preacher from West Virginia, and uh, not a lot of people know about him. Ry Cooter covered a song of his called How Can a Poor Man Stand Such Times and Live? And uh, it's just eternally fascinating to me that Blind Alfred Reed, the Carter family, and Jimmy Rogers all came from different directions and all found their way to Bristol in 1927. And that led to the big bang of country music that changed my life and everybody else's, else's life who's into American music.
Blind man on his way to town all by his lonesome cell Three miles every morning, he doesn't need no help He's never once complaining about the hand he's dealt He's got to make a living like everybody else So he sits up on the corner down on Temple Street Sells the songs he's singing For just ten cents a sheep They talk about the hard times And the coming of the Lord Put a penny in his tin cup If it's all you can afford Blind man on a dusty road, walking all alone He's got a pound of bacon, he's headed back to home Today has been a good day, some days are hard as hell But he's got to make a living, like everybody else So he sits up on the corner, down on Temple Street and sells the songs he's singing for just ten cents a sheet. They talk about the hard times and the coming of the Lord. Put a penny in his tin cup if it's all you can afford. Blind man at the station in the blazing summer heat He's gonna catch a slow train to Bristol, Tennessee No way for him to know that he'll make history It's August 27 and his name is Alfred Reed He sits up on the corner down on Temple Street and sells the songs he's singing for just ten cents a sheet. They talk about the hard times and the coming of the Lord. Put a penny in his tin cup if it's all you can afford. He sings about the hard times and the coming of the Lord. Put a penny in his tin cup. If it's all you can